Hello, my little fairy friends. Hello, my little forest friends. Hello, little chippies. Oh God, that's the one he's gonna use, isn't it? Today we're making this. Oh, this needs to be fixed. This forest floor extravaganza. So I'll tell you the whole story. I had a client come to me and ask for a mushroom and moss type of cake. So I says to her, I says, are you attached to it looking like a cake? And she said, no. And this is where we are now. My idea was for it to look like someone used a spade to cut out a chunk of the earth in a temperate boreal forest in early autumn and lifted it and presented it to you and then you can eat it in a Willy Wonka um, pure imagination type of thing. Every single part of this is edible and delicious. So with this in mind, I'm gonna show you how I made this. It was kind of a two day project because I had to make all the different elements, bake the cake, make the mushrooms, make the bark, all those types of things. Mushroom, mushroom. So I'm going to show you everything that I did to prepare these different elements and then we'll put it all together, together um, to make this beauty. So I will see you yesterday. So I just used my regular vanilla cake recipe and poured it in a 9 by 13 cake pan and a 6 inch cake pan and split those uh, and then I cut it into more irregular organic shapes, um, kind of puzzle pieced that all together. Then I filled it and crumb coated it as usual uh, and then I frosted it with a really earthy deep color. But this cake is more about all of the different components so I'm going to show you how I made each of those next. Okay, so to start for the edible moss, this is just a little bit of reserved sponge cake batter that I've put in a plastic cup and I'm gonna microwave it to cook it. Okay, giant cake. Um, so this is like a molecular gastronomy thing just to make a really fluffy sponge cake and it's very porous and very moss-like. So you can see why you get that kind of texture. I already made some other colors. Um, I was just doing some tests so this is just like regular cake. Quite dry but dark green so we have that. Um, and then I have like a brighter green. It's a mossy sponge cake. Yeah, this worked very well. Then I have prepared just a regular meringue recipe. Um, and I'm going to pipe out some meringue mushrooms. Start with some tops. And I'm trying to just make them look a little bit more natural. Usually they're so domed, like uh, white button mushrooms. Okay, and then start doing the stems. into the oven. Right, so I showed you that. I'm going to show you how I paint them. Over here, I have our meringue mushrooms. Okay, I'm just going to melt this chocolate. Okay, so here I have painted a mushroom cap. Um, you have to be really, ideally you would be using vodka, but I don't have any vodka, but you have to be very uh, reluctant with how much, I don't know what another word for that is, real careful with how much water you're using because it will just dissolve the meringue. 
So you're basically taking a dry brush, like as dry as possible. And it'll take a little bit longer, but this is just food coloring watered down. And I like that it does melt it just a little bit because I find that that distortion adds to the mushroominess of it. Have you ever been mushroom hunting? When I lived in Spain, it was like a huge family activity in the fall. Every family had secret mushroom spots. I went this summer with my friend Kelly, um, and we found some chanterelles and lobster mushrooms that actually have dry. I, uh, I dried them, and I still have them. It's important to go with someone that knows what they're doing. So does this not look like a mushroom to you? And then we put it on its little stock. And then to get the toadstool effect, I don't know if you can see it here, all I've done is taken a piece of white chocolate and I just grate some white chocolate into little bits and then I sprinkle that over the mushroom to give it like a toadstool effect. So you could do that with a red or um, with the yellow toadstools. Variety. Okay, I just need this chocolate to build my mushrooms. Okay, so let's see. Traditional chocolate mushroom cap would be chocolate on the inside here. And then take our toothpick. And you like, I think you're supposed to do this when it's dry. Do the gills of the mushroom. Take one of our toadstools bases. Little mushroom. And then we'll let that dry. Oh my god, I put so much chocolate on it. Mistakes were made. It was the first one. Okay, next is fun. We're gonna make edible earth. And this is basically a combination of like dirt pudding, which you'd eat as a kid, and the edible earth served at uh, Noma, one of the best restaurants in the world. So this is a chocolate buckwheat miso reishi cookie. Okay, so it's getting this beautiful earthy texture. Okay, so we're just gonna try to add more textures to this, although it already really does look like soil. I put some oats in the cookie too, just to give a bit more texture. I've got some leftover chocolate cake. I'm just gonna crumble in there. Mix that in. Okay, I've got some walnuts here. Not too much. Just a little bit. I'm also going to add, per the Noma recipe, some puffed rice. I'm gonna crush it a little more because I don't want it to look like perlite. It's not a potted plant. Some black sesame seeds. Some raisins. Some cocoa powder. I'm gonna just a little maple syrup in it to add some moisture. Yeah, that's just gonna help darken it. All right, edible earth finished. Okay, now we're just gonna make some mushrooms. I'm gonna paint them afterwards mostly. So, so what I wanna do is like a Trilly shape. Of a cup.
Mushroom. Mushroom. The mushroom. I'm gonna let these dry out overnight so they'll get a little a little bit more solid. Okay, well, I'm gonna keep making some mushrooms. I'm just painting the chocolate. Oh man. Chocolate is so messy. I've got some sage too, maybe for a different look. Let's catch me here. Painting mint leaves. Mm. I'm doing quite a few because there's a lot of leaves on the forest floor, right? I don't mind if they have holes and stuff. Chocolate will fix it up. Okay, I hope these work. Let's put them in the fridge. Oh my god, it's so sick! This one I fucked up too. Perfect leaf texture. Broken leaves. Cool. So to make like some rotting twigs and logs, I am crumbling some leftover cake crumbs and I'm going to mix it with this buttercream to make like a cake pop type of deal that then we can model into like log and stick shapes and coat in chocolate. I also added the leftover walnuts from the earth. Bear with me, I know how this looks. <laughs> We're not gonna show that. Once it's dipped in chocolate. Mm. I'm gonna freeze these and then dip them in chocolate. AJ, <laughs> I'm making these cake pops, but they look like poops. Like, we can't show this on television. Okay, I'll freeze these terrifying shapes. Okay, now I can paint my terrible chocolate logs. Jeez, guys. Okay, I thought this was gonna have more of a brush texture, but I can fix that. Okay, it's giving me some bark texture. That looks cute, right? I'm gonna dust these with cocoa powder um, and some other things. To just Add some dimension. Okay. Okay, we must gather our items. <laughs> so, I brought a cookie because it might work and also maybe a snack. Different types of moss, our edible earth, we've got our chocolate leaves, leaves, and we have our logs and bark. Um, I'm going to brush everything with cocoa powder. Little nooks and yeah, see, much more realistic. And then for another layer of texture, I've got some roasted soybean powder. So just kind of sprinkle there and We'll dust that off. And then, <laughs> on top of all this, I'm gonna use the soybean powder, maybe some cocoa powder. I've got some thyme that I'm gonna use as little ferns. I've got this yarrow that I'm gonna use the leaves like ferns trying to push their way out. I've got this salt from OK Sea Salt that is sea salt and spruce. I'm gonna link them in the bottom because I love them. And this is some pine sugar that I made on the spring equinox. It is just pine and sugar. 
blended together, very early spring pine. So I just wanted to include these two as like earthy flavor, maybe a little bit of texture, a little frost. I'm gonna start by pressing the soil around the sides. So I'm covering the cake in the edible earth to start, just kind of pressing it into the cake. And then after that, there's really no defined way of doing it. You just kind of are placing things as naturally and almost irregularly as possible to make it, to make it look organic. And I'm, I'm using buttercream as glue to secure everything. And this is definitely a case where more is more. Um, I did some reading about the layers of the forest floor, the earth and the leaf cover, sandwiching other parts of the forest in various stages of decomposition. And so I just kind of kept that in mind as I built it all, all up. All right, fun guys, fun girls, and fun ladies. Um, here it is. Here it is, our forest floor. A temperate North American forest in early fall. You can follow me on Instagram, I'm at Violet Bakehouse, or if you want to see me being real silly, I'm on TikTok. Yeah, I'm on TikTok, I'm a cake dad. I'm your cake dad. I'm just gonna keep fiddling. All right, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see more wild cake ideas. Um, I'll see you again soon, bye-bye.